and welcome to episode 2 of Click Team Fusion Tutorial. So today we are going to be looking at adding player movement to the RPG we started in episode 1. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin and let's get started straight away. So, last uh, episode we created this. So if I run it now, we can see, yeah, if I move it across, we can see the application there. So it randomizes the tiles, it creates the tiles automatically, so I don't have to manually put them onto the screen, it's, they're already there, um, and it does it randomly, and we, we need to tidy that up later on. But let's try and put a player in the game. Now, I'm going to uh, not have to draw my player. I'm going to double click and when you double click anywhere in here it opens up this. There are other ways of getting to this but I always find if I had moved it back here, yeah, it's fixed there now. So if I double click it opens this. That's the easiest way of getting to it. And whenever you want a player you always want active. In fact most of most of the time you want an active. Uh, very rarely do you want anything else. So if I double click and now I'm going to place my active at the top left, why not? So let's put it there somewhere. Now this sort of diamond shape is actually, uh, you could use that in your game if you wanted to. Okay, it's a placeholder. The, a lot of people have asked me in the past, well why, why do they have a placeholder in there? If they didn't have a placeholder, imagine it was let's control and A and delete, and click OK. Uh, let's put a little dot down. The problem is, if you don't have a big placeholder, <laughs> it's very difficult to find where the active is, okay? So if I press Ctrl and Z, it will undo that, okay? We're going to pretend that this is our player, so let's make this a little bit bigger, okay? So, we would think when we run the game, ignoring the fact that I can't control the player, that, you know, that would be fine, we'll be able to see that. <laughs> probably judging from the fact that I've just said that, you probably can guess that you can't. So let's click application, I'll move it across, and the player's not there. Now we can see the player's there, but what's happened is that each of these are being created and drawn onto the, onto the frame. But the way that uh, the layering works, or the ordering, is that whatever gets created last goes on top. So how do you do deal with that? Let's go to the uh, event editor. And all I'm going to do is right click on new condition. And then I'm going to go to the first one and click always. So this means this condition will always be true. And I'm going to go to my active, right click, and say order bring to front. So if I run it now, hopefully, you can see that the player is at the front. Okay, perfect. Let's go back to the frame editor, and I want to include some movement in this, okay? So what I have is I have my keyboard here, okay? And I want to control the player with my cursor keys there, okay? So what I do is I click on the active, and I go to uh, movement, which is this one here. Your um, bar here might be down here, okay, I've moved mine, I always have mine at the top. and don't worry about the way it says movement, don't worry about this bit, but where it says type, at the moment it's static, static meaning not moving, right? So if I click on it, and let's move it, let's change it to 8 directions. 8 directions is cursor key basically. Now if I run it now, okay, and if I, oh, yeah, my keyboard, I can move it up, down, left and right. Okay, I know the keyboard looks a bit funky with the green screen I'm using, but you can control it that way. Brilliant. But, down and right, you can go diagonally. And on these types of games, generally we don't want to be moving diagonally. So I want to try and disable that functionality. Okay, so to do that, what I need to do is I need to stop that and I need to click on the object and where it says directions I'm just going to disable the diagonals so I can't actually move diagonally okay I'm just going to click on it again 
and the initial direction is only there's only points to changing it uh, if you've got animations which we don't at the moment but normally you want uh, the character facing downwards first in an RPG um, or if you're doing a side scrolling game you probably want them facing right which is normally the direction of travel first um, player meaning just uh, so with this one you can have four players uh, and you can change the controls elsewhere um, speed, deceleration, acceleration is only there's only point to changing that once you have the game set up a little bit more and you realize that the character is moving way too fast or way too slow you can actually change these in the event editor so you can get a power up to make you move faster um, okay so let's try it now let's drag it across and using my curse keys okay the curse keys are being a bit silly at the moment and there we go and just move it around brilliant okay um, and I think that is it the only thing I want to do uh, there's one more thing I want to do I want to make sure that it can't go off the frame okay so if I run it again you can see that I, the character the keyboard decides to work yeah, it does character can go off the screen so we want to, we want to disable that so if I go to the event editor and I right click I think you can left click as well I'm just used to right clicking and you click on your character which I know looks a bit rubbish at the moment and where do we want to go we want to go to position I think test position of active and you want to click on the fat these arrows here saying that he's he or she or whatever is going out of the frame. And I think this one covers all of them. But I never clicked that one, so I'm gonna click these ones instead. <laughs> okay. And I think that's the same as clicking that middle one thing. Doesn't come up with a tooltip, so I didn't tell you. Okay. And what we want to do is just movement and I just want to uh, stop. When you bounce it, it doesn't look great for a, for a character. So if I run the application again, then I can't go off the screen. Okay. So however much I try, I can't go off the screen. See so here, I'm trying, I'm trying desperately to go off the screen. It's not letting me. Okay. Now, at the moment, when I look at that, the movement. It doesn't look very good. First of all, there's no character there, right? So we need to create a character. And that's an advanced topic, which I don't want to cover just yet. But we will do. Um, the second thing is, uh, I don't like the fact that the character can be between tiles. The character's not limited to a certain, um, certain tile at all. So what we want is the character to be on a tile. And then when you click right, it automatically moves makes the animation to the next tile so you can never stop between tiles okay so we want to try and find a way of making that work which we will do in later videos so at the moment we've got something that's starting to look well actually it looks pretty rubbish <laughs> but you, with a hazy view you can see the fact that we can create something amazing with this okay but it takes time learning takes time thank you very much for watching uh, and I'm going to carry on playing because I enjoy doing all this stuff. But um, thank you very much for watching. We're gonna, I'm going to make a video next on how you get the frame to scroll. Uh, I'm going to do some sort of bad ways of doing it and then hopefully find a, a solution which works for us. So thank you very much for watching.